In this video, you are going to learn a simple step-by-step -step guide on how to make a bar bending shed for beams more than 12 meters. In fact, the new method that I'm about to show you will help you save a lot of time when preparing a bar bending shed. You will learn how to do overlapping correctly in beams and also learn how to determine the exact number of steel bars required for the beam. You will also learn how to follow structure drawings to make a bar bending schedule accurately so be sure to watch this video till the end because you don't want to miss this. Basically, when preparing a bar bending schedule for any structure member, the first step is to draw a table having the reference number, the description, the bar mark, the type of mark, number of members, number of bars in each and the total number of steel bars here, with the sides of the steel bar as A, B, C, D, E and F and the total cutting length in this column here. Making a bar bending schedule for beams more than 12 meters is entirely based on the concept of overlapping. An overlap is simply this extra length on a steel bar that allows safe transfer of load from one steel bar to another. The lapping length of the steel bar can be gotten using the formula overlap is equal to 50D, where 50 is a constant and D is the diameter of the steel bar. For example, if the diameter of the steel bar is 10 mm, overlap here is 50 multiplied by 10 to give us 500 mm. If the steel bar is of 12 mm bar thickness, Overlap here is equal to 600 millimeters, among others. When preparing a bar bending schedule for beams more than 12 meters, you must first understand the lapping position for top bars and bottom bars. Bottom bars are overlapped from the center of columns. For example, if we are using 16 millimeter bars in the beams, one steel bar will be coming from the left to the lapping position from the center here in the column. Then add extra overlap of 400 millimeters. Then another steel bar coming from the right will come to the lapping position of this column here. Add extra overlap of 400 millimeters to make this total overlap as 800 millimeters. Then on the other hand, the correct lapping position for top bars is at exactly the center of the beam, that is L divided by 2. For example, if we are having a beam of 20 meters and we are using steel bars of 16 millimeters bar thickness, one steel bar will be coming from the left to the lapping position at exactly 10 meters, add extra 400 millimeters. Then another steel bar will be coming from the right to the lapping position at exactly 10 meters, add extra overlap of 400 millimeters to make the total overlap as 800 millimeters. And right now, you might be wondering, why are we saying beams more than 12 meters? This is simply because the standard length for one steel bar is 12 meters, Meaning when you have a beam more than 12 meters, there is need to add together more than two steel bars thus need for overlapping. Preparing a bar bending schedule for beams more than 12 meters simply bases on the above concepts that we've talked about. And right now, let's look at a practical example of beam 002. Beam 002 starts from grid line 1C to grid line 1F and its total length is 14.4 meters. Remember that all our steel bars are of 12 meters and there is no single steel bar that is going to cover the whole beam, meaning the first bar will be bent like this, joined together with another bar having an overlap plus two development lengths for both top bars and bottom bars. But you can't just do that anyhow. You have to keep in mind that bottom bars are overlapped at columns, whereas top bars are overlapped far away from columns and of course at mid-span of the beam. The only way that I can explain it to try to really make sense is that let's say this is the top view of the slab with long beams along the x-axis with also other beams along the y-axis with columns at each of these positions Choose one position where to overlap all bottom bars and also choose one position where to overlap all top bars for the beams. In other words, all bottom bars for each of these beams will be overlapped from positions of columns 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whereas all top bars will be overlapped from the center of the beams at positions A, B, C, D and E. Therefore, from our building, we are choosing this position where we are going to overlap all bottom bars and this position where we are going to overlap all top bars. In other words, we have agreed to choose the midpoint for top bars at this point halfway between grid line 1D and grid line 1E at this 2.4 meters mark. 
even when the building is long enough along its all sides, for example 16 meters along the length and 15 meters along the width. Choose one position along its length where it overlap bottom bars from, for example at grid length 2.3. And also choose one position where it overlap top bars from, for example, between grid line 2.3 and grid line 2.4 at this 2.4 meters mark. Even along the width, choose one position, say at grid line 2D, where it overlap all bottom bars from, and also between grid line 2D and 2E, where it overlap all top bars from. Also note that when working on large spans, that is spans more than 12 meters that have overlaps in beams, slabs, or any other structure members, ignore adding and subtracting spacer blocks or concrete covers as they will bring confusion. The small distance for concrete covers or spacer block at the ends will simply add up itself to the overlapping position. We are going to look at an example involving this so as to understand this clearly. And we are going to break down the whole process into four easy steps that literally anyone can understand. The first step is to find out the cutting length for beam top bars. From grid line 1C to grid line 1D, it is 4.8 meters plus 2.4 meters up the center here. This is 7.2 meters. Add 100 millimeters to get the external distance. Therefore, 7.2 meters plus 100 millimeters, we get 7.3 meters. 7.3 meters stops at this 2.4 meters mark. Then when we add up 300 millimeters for the overlap, we are using steel bars of 12 millimeters bar diameter. Therefore, we add 300 millimeters extra length on one steel bar and 300 millimeters extra length on another steel bar to get the total overlap at 600 millimeters. Therefore, 7.3 meters plus 300 millimeters we get 7.6 meters as the total, and that is what we feel here. Since we agreed that we are overlapping top bars from the center of the beam at exactly total length L divided by 2, and we have worked on one side, meaning the other side will also be 7.3 meters, add extra 300 millimeters for the overlap from the other side to make the total overlap here as 600 millimeters. And that's how you find out the cutting length for top bars in beams, this concept also applies for other kinds of beams including the ground beam, upstand beam, downstand beam and slab beam. This is the top view for all beams as seen from above and this is the side view for a single beam as seen from aside. This is 7.6 meters here and this is 7.6 meters here with an overlap of 600 millimeters. Step 2 is to find out the cutting length for beam bottom bars. We chose columns along grid line 1D as the overlapping position for all these bottom bars. So when you get 4.8 meters plus 100 millimeters, we get 4.9 meters. We add 100 millimeters so as to get the external distance. Get 4.9 meters, add 300 millimeters to get 5.2 meters, and that is what we write here. Similarly, from grid line 1F to grid line 1D is 9.6 meters. Add 100 millimeters half wall thickness because the grid line passes through the center of the wall to get 9.7 meters. Since we are using steel bars of 12 millimeters bar diameter, add extra 300 millimeters to make the total overlap as 600 millimeters and the total steel bar length as 10 meters. And that's what we feel here as 5.2 meters for the first bar and 10 meters for the second bar. Step 3 is to find out the development length for both bottom bars and top bars. To get the development length, we go back to the section of the ground beam. It details that the ground beam is of depth 220 mm, so when you get 220 mm, deduct 25 mm concrete cover or spacer block at the bottom and also deduct 25 mm concrete cover on top, we remain with 170 mm. Get 170 millimeters, divide by 2, the top development length and the bottom development length, we remain with 85 millimeters for each of the two development lengths. But remember we want our development length to overlap, the one at the bottom and the one on top, so we shall make this one as 100 millimeters instead of 85 millimeters. We simply top up so as these two development lengths will overlap. In other words, the development length on one side will be 100 mm and also the other side will also be 100 mm. Step 4 is to find out the number of links or stirrups required for the beam. 
To find out the number of links required, the whole distance is 4.8 meters. This grid line passes through the center line of the column. The columns have 200 millimeters width, meaning one side is 100 millimeters and another side is 100 millimeters also. Since we cannot fix links in the center of columns but rather these small distances between columns, this will be 4.8 meters, deduct 100 millimeters on one side and 100 millimeters on the other side to remain with 4.6 meters. For every distance of 4.6 meters, we need 32 links or beam stirrups. In other words, we need 32 links or beam stirrups for all these distances of 4.6 meters. To summarize all this in a bar bending schedule, these are top bars, these are bottom bars with all these measurements that we've calculated together from start to finish, and links with 32 links required for each distance of 4.6 meters. Bar mark as 01 for the beam top bars and bottom bars, type of mark or steel bar thickness as H12 for beam main bars and H8 for the links respectively. Number of members as 5 because we have 5 beams with the same size or dimensions that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and this is what we fill here as number of members. Number of bars is 2 to get the total number here as 10. When we add 32 plus 32 plus 32, we get 96. 96 multiplied by 5, we get 480. After adding all these sides as A, B, C, D, E, F, we fill this column for the cutting length here. In summary, when preparing a bar bending schedule for beams, the first step is to find out the length of the top bars, which we have gotten as 7.6 meters and 7.6 meters here respectively. The second step is to find out the length of the bottom bars, which we have found out as 5.2 meters and 10 meters respectively. Third step is to find out the development length for the steel bars, which we have calculated and found out as 100 millimeters. And the fourth step is to find out the number of links required. When you want to know the number of steel bars required, simply get the total length and divide by the standard length of one steel bar. The answer you get is the exact number of steel bars you need to purchase from the hardware store or factory. That's all you need to know about how to prepare a bar bending schedule for beams more than 12 meters. Nothing more, nothing less. I hope you get something from it. Be sure to watch this next video about how to prepare a bar bending schedule for the lift shaft wall and how to find out the exact number of steel bars required for the lift shaft wall. In case you want to watch the entire playlist on how to make a bar bending schedule for all structure members in order, click on this video on the left or in case you want to watch the next video, click on this video on the right. Thank you so much for watching.